Hi, my name is Jennifer Matos. I'm the Executive Director of the Noah Webster House and West Hartford Historical Society. Welcome to the sixth edition of our armchair tour of West Hartford history. You might already have a guess of where I'm standing today. Um, you can see some of the gardens around me and where else could I be but of course our beautiful Elizabeth Park. We are so fortunate in West Hartford and Hartford to have a place like Elizabeth Park which is known as being the oldest continuously operating rose garden in the country. But I wonder how many of us actually know that much about Elizabeth Park and how it got its start. Maybe how it got its name. And also, why is it in West Hartford and Hartford? So hopefully I can clear up some of those questions for you in this video. So first of all, the story of, of this place, this land, goes back to 1839 when a man named Charles F. Pond purchased about 33 acres of land on the western edge of Hartford. Charles F. Pond was a wealthy businessman, and he actually purchased this land to be a gentleman's farm. He called it Prospect Hill Farm, and he actually raised cattle here. He died in 1869 and left the land to his son, Charles M. Pond. Charles M. Pond um, was a 32-year-old man. He had um, been the, the treasurer of the Hartford New Haven Railroad Company and also later went on to serve as a state senator and eventually was the treasurer for the state of Connecticut. Well, in 1870, he married a woman named Elizabeth Aldrich. Uh, it was actually uh, Sarah Elizabeth Aldrich, but she was known as Elizabeth. And when they married in 1870, they actually built a house for themselves um, on the western side of Prospect Avenue, um, closer to where that entrance of Elizabeth Park is today. It was a beautiful Second Empire building, um, really a mansion, and all around it they had gardens because Elizabeth was very fond of gardens and flowers and plants. They actually continued to purchase the land surrounding their farm to get up to about 90 acres of land, and they actually established a nursery around where today's Rose Garden is to propagate their own plants. So Elizabeth was fond of plants, Charles was fond of horse racing, so we know that uh, from our past uh, episodes that West Hartford has quite a history related to horse racing, and Charles Pond also was very interested in racing, and he actually raised his own purebred trotters. He actually, where I'm standing, around where the Rose Garden is today, eventually became um, a track. He, he had a dirt track where he actually would race his trotters for practice if you can imagine that uh, here in Elizabeth Park. Um, so they were very happy here, but they had no children. And in the late 18, or I'm sorry, the beginning of the 1890s, in 1891, Elizabeth Pond passes away. 1894, Charles Pond passes away. Before he dies, there is a reverend named Francis Goodwin who persuades Pond to leave his land to the, uh, to the city of Hartford so that it can become a park. Pond agrees, and in his um, bequest, he stipulates that the park is to be used for, for the public, and it is also to be associated with the name Elizabeth in memory of his beloved wife. So that's how you get the Elizabeth Park. Um, so in 1896, the city of, of Hartford hires a Swiss landscape architect. His name um, was Theodore Wirth, and Theodore Wirth had actually worked on um, Central Park with Frederick Law Olmsted's team. And so he actually consulted Olmsted on the design of this, this park, Elizabeth Park. He designed about 60 of the 90 acres that were donated um, by Pond. And um, it, it, the landscape looked very similar to what we see today. He created gardens, he created ponds and fields and overlooks and brooks. He actually was responsible for building the rustic bridge. Um, that still stands today, which was built in 1898. He also had uh, two, uh, two greenhouses built in 1898 and 1899, which are still standing today. And that was so that the park would be able to propagate its own plants. So the park officially opened in 1897 to the public. Um, by 1903, the Rose Garden was being so the Rose Garden was laid out by Theodore Wirth, and it centered around this rustic summer house that I'm standing in front of, uh, which is very much an iconic part of Elizabeth Park and certainly hosts many wedding photos and, and variety of photos, uh, makes an excellent drop, drop back for this video too. Uh, so um, by 1903, 
1904, the trolley service had expanded to allow more people to visit the park. By 1905, the Rose Garden is beautiful and well-established enough to be renowned throughout the United States. And in that year, the, the crowds that came here were enormous. They could, you could see anywhere as up to 10,000 people here at the park on any given Sunday. So extremely popular. In the meantime, Charles Pond's mansion was actually used as a recreation center. Um, it had a snack bar in it and also a free library for people to use. Unfortunately, it fell into disrepair and by the 1950s, that building was torn down and no longer stands today. I am gonna post a picture of what the house looked like since you can see it's a very, very beautiful Second Empire style mansion. Um, and in 1959, the building that is currently the pond house today, the restaurant, was built also as a snack bar. And the two towns, West Hartford and Hartford, went through many debates in the early 2000s to decide whether or not a restaurant could occupy, occupy the space or not. Of course, it is now occupied by the restaurant called the Pond House, uh, which is still open today. So you might be wondering why the park is in both Hartford and West Hartford. So technically, the park is owned by the city of Hartford. But what happened is that the boundary lines between Hartford and West Hartford changed since the park was established. And today, of the 102 acres that this park encompasses, 82, maybe 81, <laughs> are, um, are in West Hartford and the remainder are in the city of Hartford. So that is how we, we come across this very strange situation where we have a park that is owned by, by one municipality but actually in the jurisdiction or um, in, the, in the boundaries of the other. Um, so we are so fortunate in both West Hartford and Hartford to have such a park as this. Not only the oldest continuously operated rose garden in the country, but just a beautiful pastoral place to visit and com um, contemplate. And um, as the spring weather is coming out, it's a great time to come out here and enjoy what you're seeing, enjoying nature and enjoying uh, really this landscape that has been created for us. But it's also a time to really think about the history of the place and that this really is a truly historic place in our community. And I hope the next time you visit, you'll think a little bit about uh, um, Charles Pond and his wife Elizabeth. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week.